Hi guys, we've got a different tutorial for you today. This is all about a lesson that I had last week with Peter uh, on Friday. Peter's been before and his game's been improving and this lesson was all about the driver because it's the driver that's been costing him lately. And you're gonna see why and you're gonna see the changes we made which resulted in him getting the ball fly that he wanted. He had to loft his driver up to 10.5. He's a big guy, high club head speed, and he was playing with 10.5 and getting pull draws, push cuts, and he was really struggling. He was having to try and just play with a fade, which was okay, but it was holding him back because the rest of his game has been developing so well. But in this lesson, we made some transformative changes to his swing, which resulted in getting that higher launch, resulting in him lofting his driver down to nine degrees because it increased his launch angle which brought his spin loft down so ultimately he's launched it a bit higher less spin and less curvature so he started to the ball pretty straight it was just a little draw every time at worst a little push so his ball flight became very playable straight away he'd be able to take that on the golf course and use visualization and start to develop his feel for it and start to regulate it so it becomes now a positive part of his game, it starts to become a strength, something he's not fearing, something he's actually relishing, instead of worrying about the tee shot, just trying to get it in play, because his iron game's improved so much, and his short game and his putting are absolutely top, so it was the driver that we had to focus on. So I want to talk to you first of all about what the swing looked like, and more importantly the function behind it when he came. So here's the swing that Peter came through the door with, with his driver, so we've got the left foot, the right foot, so he's hitting this way, even though the video shows the opposite direction. We can see where the center of pressure is in his stance. So he's 50-50 at this moment in time, loaded more towards the balls of his feet. As he swings back, the pressure shifts rapidly. That's what you normally expect. Everything is looking good. And then what happens now is he shifts direction, which is all good, but then he shifts so far onto the toe over here, so far onto the ball of the foot and the toe, which is actually a good direction to shift the pressure in. This trace is fantastic, but he loads it so heavily and then he starts to swing down and it continues loading and loading and loading. But what's important here is there's so much pressure on the left side, his right foot loses contact and it really isn't engaged. So notice now he's up to 97%. This is now entering into the fastest part of his golf swing and it's 97% as he's unloading, 98% on his lead foot as he's trying to hit a ball upwards. So it's just making life very, very difficult because there's no engagement with the ground with his right foot, so there's no traction. We're gonna talk about this in a minute about what effect this has and maybe this could be affecting your game if you're not getting the launch with the driver. He was struggling with the launch, he was way too low. This is why he had to loft up because he was essentially hitting down. So he's so heavily loaded on the left side and pivoting around that left side Essentially, he can't create any side bend because there's no stability. So he's just rotating around the left side and it's taking his swing to, around to the left and down. And this is with the driver. So he was getting away with it with his irons previously because he was hitting these kind of low fades and he's a strong guy. So even though he's not actually maximizing the use of the ground and his potential sequencing, he could use his strength to get the speed and he had this kind of fade that he trusted but that wasn't going to work with his driver so what you'll notice is he swings and then changes direction he's just rotating around his left side his left side's still in flexion he's not really using that full extension of the left side but that's because if you look at the right leg look at this sliding action You'll have seen a lot of stuff, I'm sure, on social media. You'll have seen, obviously, Scotty Scheffler. There's people who use lots of leg action, and that's good. Bubba Watson, Justin Thomas, Scotty Scheffler, there's loads. In fact, I mean, all the players are using the ground in their own way, but it's functional. The form is underpinned by function. So it's okay to say, yeah, it's a, no problem having the legs moving around, but if the function isn't there for that movement, then that's an issue. So it's okay to be using the ground like Scotty Scheffler if you are creating those forces that give you control over the sequence and optimise that sequence for speed. What we're looking for in Peter's swing is function. I'm going to show you now, I'm going to cut to the chase and go to the, one of the drills we did and I'm going to show you this drill now. Where most people normally hang back, Peter was the opposite. He was shifting forward with the pressure and really now this was disengaged with the ground and now can't recruit the ground and support the action he wants to make with the left side. 
So ultimately, he was swinging on one leg and rotating. So naturally, to create power, you'd have to use this rotation, transverse plane here, and this created that shot to the, to the left or the fade. Look what happened when we challenged his right leg. And to do that, we raised his left leg. So we raised his lead leg using a balance disc. So if you've got one, if you've got a GRF, fantastic. Use the one from the GRF. If not, you can buy them on Amazon or not. You can buy them online from any kind of fitness store. Just a cheap balance pad will do. You don't need to inflate it fully, probably about 80%. So there's some movement. But then wedge your lead foot up and make some swings. If you love the coaching and want to experience the effects of the training that you see with our pupils, you can purchase the GRFI system yourself by following the link in the video description. You'll get all the equipment and a two hour download covering all the fundamentals, exploring your movement and how you can use the ground and create those all important ground reaction forces and transfer them through to clubhead speed and experience the gains that you're seeing in the videos. And notice how this challenges you to push off the right leg. So you've got to be pushing off the foot. If I push in, I can't use my left side. I'm actually now immobilizing the pelvis. If I push up too early, I'm moving back. But if I shift, if I allow myself to shift, notice there's a natural collapse here. You're gonna notice this with all the top players in the world, there is a natural collapse. This can be misinterpreted sometimes. People think it's just a jump, but that would just be a supinated foot trying to stay in supination and push. That's not how we would walk. The foot has to collapse. The arch has to collapse, the foot has to pronate, we're ready to recoil. It's just that we're not doing it in this direction in golf, like we are in walking, we're doing it in this direction with rotation. So it looks different, but it's the same mechanism. What I'd like you to do is take your shoes off and just in your socks, wedge that lead leg up. Take your driver, make sure you've got plenty of space guys, so if you're indoors, be careful. So now you can experience what you're trying to do with the trail leg in order for the lead leg to function. Just be mindful of where that pressure's shifting. You're probably gonna sense the pressure move through the inside of the foot. Now it's not loaded on the inside on the way back, it's moving through the whole foot. So notice here the logo on the sock there on the ankle, it rotates. So the ankle and the hip are assisting the rotation of the pelvis, this eccentric loading, this winding up of the body here, ready to load into the floor and then you'll notice the logo moves back in. And that's a pronation. So that's a pronation ready to resupinate, which is then gonna allow us to essentially resupinate both feet. So we can use both feet. Both feet are resupinating. They're using the same mechanism, using the balls of the feet, and we're getting this elevation from the ground. This is what got Peter these major changes in how he was delivering the golf club because now he's lifting himself up, he's rotating, he's side bending, he's now getting an increase in angle of attack, D lofts his driver, and now he can start to explore the flight and start to really explore his movement because he's getting more confidence. Now, in this tutorial, we're gonna take it a little bit further. We're gonna use this bar. You can use any kind of steel piping, what I would recommend, maybe something at hand, might be something like a, um, a shovel or a spade, which has got a big thick handle, and you can lay on the ground, and it's not gonna move much, just make sure you point <laughs> the spikes down, and, and it's somewhere safe. Maybe a sledgehammer or something like that as well, that's not really gonna be too, it's, not, it's got to be stable, because when you stand on this, and also use a balance pad, you're gonna have to organize this foot position yourself for stability. Anything round here, you're gonna slide off. Anything on the inside, you're gonna slide off. I'd suggest, it's a bit fresh here today, I'd suggest you do this in bare feet for a bit more traction. And you want the bar between the first and the second toe. So we're actually using our feet how they were designed to be used. Now notice here, for stability, my heel and my first and second toe are providing that stability. Notice when I rotate back, my foot is gonna Roll slightly. We don't want to hold that in position and try and 
keep it stable and still and stiff if you like. We want to let it move a little bit. Let the ankle move, let the knee, let the hip rotate. So you stood on the handle and explore this movement. Notice how the pressure goes from the heel through to the toe, but the foot's doing it in a very stable way. So there's movement, but with stability. Notice where the knee's going as I'm rotating. It's going in, but the foot doesn't slide. So we're not shifting, we're not sliding. This leg isn't inactive. It's still very much active with that bar. There's still a push. And now what I'm able to do using this form is tap into the function. I can push. So I've had to move around. And now I'm on, almost on the inside of the bar, but I can push and it's pushing me up and it's gonna provide the force to enable me to rotate this way and this way. And then notice I've come up onto the toes. Look at the big toe and the second toe here. The foot's being used here as a springboard, but it's in combination with the left foot. That's a springboard. So making some little swings, tiny swings, because this is almost a balancing act. And notice the trail leg, how it has to naturally collapse to then extend. It doesn't just stay out here and push, because if I do this too excessively, I can't rotate. And I'm gonna to struggle to shift my pressure and use the lead side. And probably just going to excessive tilt here and struggle to get rotation in the transverse plane. So I can't really optimize that combination of the, ro of the rotations. So just making easy three quarter swings and starting to feel how the lead leg now reacts to the trail. You can feel there's a shift and there's a spring. And this bar really accentuates the feedback you're getting. It's heightening your sensitivity, making you much more aware of that foot ground interaction. And then suddenly the swing starts to look much more functional for a driver, where we need to hit up. So naturally you're getting this positive angle of attack. Naturally you're starting to get the club swinging out instead of to the left as a, as a right hander. This is now going to create an opportunity for you to explore different ball flights because you're swinging the club now in different space. Space that's needed for a draw shape or for a straighter shot because we've got to shift away from that space we're currently swinging in for a fade or a pull if that's our shot pattern that we're trying to move away from or if we're launching the ball too low or it's, it's spinning up so it starts low and spins or adding loft. This exercise here is going to enable us to really tune ourselves in to the leg action we need to load and unload. So thinking about both legs, using a setup like this, just to switch on the sensors to what the lower body's doing, then you can start to make bigger swings, increase the swing length, you'll start to feel the timing of the push, you're going to let the foot pronate to resupinate, that's going to allow you to fire that lead side too in combination that's going to get the body unweighting rotating and delivering that golf club ideally for the driver just like peter did <laughs>